Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Bahrain Games. First game's kicking off at 8 o'clock this morning, so you've got to be on the pitch on time. We've got 94 to 96 teams playing over the weekend, trying to run things on schedule. We have three pitches here at the rugby club and four outside. Big numbers and big characters like Donny Gall, All-Ireland goalkeeper Paul Durkin playing for Qatar. And the teams from Alain, from Sharjah, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia and all over the Middle East preparing for another tough day of games in the sun in the latest and biggest round of the Middle East League hosted by the Arabian Celts. For the Bahrain Games um, this year we have a total of 93 teams from across the Middle East and uh, region. Uh, it comprises uh, 38 men's teams football, uh, 43 ladies teams football, uh, 6 hurling and 6 camogie. Um, so that totals up to 1,104 players um, from the Middle East region coming into the uh, region. And that's a record, breaking the 1,000 player barrier for the first time and so making it the biggest ever Gaelic Games event in the Middle East. A far cry from the first game in the region nearly a quarter of a century ago. Well, if you'd told me 24 years ago we are going to have this number of people, I would have told you you were daft, you know, because it was only, we thought it was just going to be Saudi Arabia, but the guys that were here in Bahrain and in Saudi who moved on to Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Qatar, they set up clubs down there. And this is why it's got so big. Like, it's just, it gives people that are from Ireland something to do that is distinctively Irish. But it's not just about the Irish. Many locals have come on board in the last 24 years to both play and help organise events. Yeah, see, we've, you know, this is my eighth year with the Arabian Celts and I've seen it grow from 20 to 40 to last year 80 and now I think it's 93 teams. So, you know, we're a very inclusive club, you know, the more the merrier. Um, I think it's fantastic for the game of Gaelic football outside of Ireland, especially in the Middle East, especially here in Bahrain, being such a small island. Uh, but we're just now, we have the reputation of being the best games uh, in the Middle East, and that's great for us and teams. And it's not just about the games. There's a mutual benefit for business and the Irish community in Bahrain from the huge numbers being attracted to the area. We've got the Bahrain Irish Business Network, we've got the Gaelic, um, the, the Arabian Celts, and they form uh, kind of the fall under the umbrella of the Bahrain Irish Society. So we all work together, we have representatives of each group on each um, various committees, and we all meet up and we try and coordinate events. So how important is the GA to the business side? It's huge, it's huge. I mean, we're talking about, what, 1,100 people that have come over here today. You can see the advertising all around the stadium. Uh, we had um, some of the referees came to our business lunch event yesterday, and we had some uh, Bahraini dignitaries at the event. And it all kind of plugs in together, and it forms, uh, I think, a, a bit of a uh, snowball effect. It builds up the profile of not just the GAA, but the Irish community here, and, and how important it is to, to the business networks around the region, as well as the games. So it's hugely important. Everybody loves coming here. They do, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's really got, uh, over the last few years, we've really seen a lot of momentum building up and it's uh, really getting a great reputation. I mean, one of my friends just texted me today from home, said that he's heard all about the games. So it's, it's that kind of momentum that we're looking to sustain and build on for forthcoming years. We always say it's Bahrain's the best tournament and has the best crack, but you know, now we don't even have to say it because all the other clubs, you know, you read around Facebook and social media and they're saying, you know, we're very excited to beat in Bahrain. Um, we know it's the place to be and we're very excited. So we don't even have to say it anymore. All, all the other clubs are saying it for us. And on the Friday, loads of kids here. That was great to see. Fantastic to see. Um, and it's something as a club where we're trying to promote and, and drive forward. We've got a very active uh, and vibrant um, kids um, uh, committee. And um, this year we're, we're, and last year we started uh, moving the uh, Gaelic football into local schools. So there, that's why we had so many um, uh, kids here yesterday, approximately 160 kids um, from the local schools. And you might have seen at that um, not all of them were Irish, which was something that um, you know is is something that we're we're, we're trying to um, um, promote and uh, and drive forward. And their parents loving it too. Parents are absolutely um, loving it because um, you know uh, 
it's a different type of a sport um, and um, it's something that's that's new to them uh, but it's great to see local Bahraini kids um, um, to playing um, our native Irish um, football fantastic for me as a Bahraini you know I'm proud of my country that has that you know welcomed Gaelic football um, I'm sure a lot of Bahrainis would say the same thing you know we're very open people um, we're open to any sport um, any culture um, and you know the Irish culture in Bahrain is as well very big and you know the Irish they came to Bahrain very friendly and you know that's all we asked for so you know we're always welcoming you know especially the sport like this with open arms so I'm I'm proud as a Bahraini and as a GA man. So history made in Bahrain not for the first time. Dermot Wallace contends that the Middle East is one of the global trailblazers for the GAA. It, it wasn't just here like the, we actually had some guys here who went to uh, Asia and they started the Asian Games so basically Bahrain was the foundation of most of the games outside of normally Irish areas such as like uh, London, Boston etc so I suppose we created a monster to, to some extent like you know but they're all because of us you know that we, we started and they took, it took over from there like you know and we've had people we have even had um, Kuwaiti ladies in the hijab playing you know which was unusual in the first year first year or two and we had it was a guy from Dubai, uh, and they called him Johnny Muhammad. He was a local um, uh, Emirati, and uh, he came up and played for the first two or three years and really enjoyed it, you know. And just finally, I make it that you're the second biggest adult football competition in the world after the North Americans this year. That's quite an achievement. Yeah, uh, something we're absolutely proud of um, for a small uh, club like the Arabian Celts um, in a small island like Bahrain. Um, to host the, um, uh, the Bahrain Games is something that we're, um, takes a lot of work, um, I can tell you that. It's not something that um, happens overnight. There's a, a very um, strong committee here um, and uh, we've been working hard for uh, the last number of months. But I think the history of the Bahrain Games goes back, not just um, this last year, but back to the last five or six years. Um, and that is um, to the hard work of past um, Arabian Celts like James Kennedy, Joe Melia and that so yeah fantastic to hear and uh, we'll, we'll keep going shall we sir.